I'm Dylan Stevens, and I set up the website for Dr. Barbara Thiering, who had a few published books that were very popular. I wrote a book a few years ago called The Pesher of Christ, and it tells the true story of Jesus and his church. It tells the story from the very beginning and towards the end after he died. And I thought that I would want to bring it to YouTube. It might be more accessible that way. Section 1, 8 B.C. to 28 A.D., the early years, birth, the coming of age, joining the monastery of Kunlun. Chapter 1, 6 A.D. to 34 A.D., Pentecost, the age of wrath. So the year 6 A.D. was declared by Daniel as the age of wrath. This is the Daniel who was in the lion's den. He says in 70 weeks, which turns out to be 490 years. They are determined to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring everlasting righteousness. In the eighth age, God's promise was to take an active role to bring his kingdom on earth, and thus of peoples were to be expected. Subtracting 490 years from the restoration of the temple, in 527 equal the start of Herod's reign, at 37 BC, Menahem the Essene had prophesied this date to Herod the Great, which made him partial to the Essenes. Although Herod had rebuilt the temple, he slaughtered the innocents. Thus the original date was moved forward two jubilees to exclude Herod's reign. Thus two times 49 plus two equals 100 which corresponded to the birth of John the Baptist in 8 B.C. Jesus' birth was in 7 B.C. So at that time, Jerusalem was made up of different groups. There was Judea, which would be where Qumran is on to the west, and Jerusalem is. And then there's Samaria, where Joppa is, and Caesarea, and then there's, there's the Kingdom of Galilee with Capernaum, and then there are outlying areas. But the point is that in the beginning, Herod Oculus was given most of the land, and Herod Antipas was just given Galilee. Chapter 2, January 6 AD, Taxation of Cyrenius, Revolt of Judas the Galilean. Joseph greets Thetis. Hail, my brother. The Zada, I am confident that we will prevail against Cyrenius's tax collections. Our leader Judas the Galilean will succeed like the Maccabees of old. Thetis replies, Yes, dear brother Joseph, the star of David, we are to assemble with the other zealots on the plains of Armageddon for the final stand. With the fatted calf, King Oculus, banished, I am glad that you, the prodigal son, and Galafria have come to your senses and left that Qumran fort that was a brothel of Roman swine. His conversion to a monastery is now complete. Thetis replies, Father Simeon granted me contrition, and I have repented of wasting my share of the church fortune on wine, women, and song. I am sorry that I portrayed you, dear brother. Joseph says, it was a mistake that Augustus Caesar awarded Oculus, the kingdom of Judea, upon the death of his father Herod the Great, his half-brother Antipas, who also petitioned Caesar, but received merely a tetrarch, would have been a better ruler. Joseph, the son of Herod's fifth wife, who was given areas north of these lands, was also a better choice, but now we are at war. They ride off. Chapter 3, March 6, A.D. The Rebellion Finds Religion Ananus, the new high priest, greets Joseph at the entrance of Qumran, the second Jerusalem, saying, Joseph, your son Jesus is now the rising star of the West. Many are planning to attend his bar mitzvah. Joseph says, Thank you, Father Ananus, for absolving my son Jesus, who has suffered from my indiscretion. 
Now that the zealots have been removed from the fort to Judas, the Galilean established at Qumran, let us hope that we can remain at peace with Rome so that the promised restoration can occur. This monastery, having been abandoned by the Essenes after the earthquake in 31 BC, now houses our group of less strict Essenes, who can act as the focal point of the secret opposition to the Romans. Joseph says, yes, the seekers of smooth things, that derogatory term for our Essene sect. Obviously, marriage had to be allowed for the priests and the descendants of David, for these important lines would die out. There is already a massive amount of gold coins collected from pilgrims, which are hidden in the buildings around here, listed in the Copper Scroll. In fact, I have been made the gardener for one of the two caves on the west edge of Qumran, which is a latrine and a hiding place for these coins. And Ananus says, it was a fortunate happenstance that twelve years ago, when you were chastised for your actions, the monastery lent you and Mary a small birthing room south of here, now called the Queen's House in her honor, the room being next to a stable where the ceremonial donkey and the oxen were housed, would symbolize that our firstborn son of the David line was firstly a man of the people rather than a king. Chapter 4, March 7 B.C. Matthew's Bethlehem Story The year was 6 A.D. Jesus bowed before Herod Antipas and his wife Phasaelus as they approached him. Congratulations, you are legitimate again, says Herod Antipas. I see that Josiah Bothus the deposed high priest is here. He foolishly supported the taxation of Serenius. It was fitting that his symbolic birth of your bar mitzvah is now being held at your birthplace at the queen's house. Jesus says, His opposition was nothing compared to your father, Herod the Great, whom the wise men deceived by means of a calendar error in his slaughter of the innocents. Even I, says Herod Antipas, could have been one of his executions like my half-brothers, Alexander and Aristobulus. Let me introduce my wife, Phasaelus, the daughter of King Aratus IV of the Nabians, our neighbors to the west and south. Then beckoning to a couple dressed like an Arabian king and queen, he continues with a smile. Let me introduce my father-in-law, King Aratus IV, and his queen, Huldu of the Nabataeans. He has met you before. Thinking quickly and remembering how that country was famous for a certain spice, Jesus says, Could it really be that you were the wise man who brought me frankincense? I am that very one. I brought you frankincense because it was the cleaning agent of the white linen garments of the Essenes of whom I believe you will be part of one day. Hillel brought you a golden book of his sayings. Your grandfather, Jacob, brought you myrrh to use with your bride of Solomon to continue the David line. Chapter 5a, June 8 B.C. The Sins of the Father Seeing Simeon and Anna, Jesus says, Esteemed ones, I need your help to explain why my mother has greater love for my younger brother James. Have I not attended to my mother and helped her with her tasks in the female convent? What is it that James offers her that I do not? At five years old, people are already claiming him James the Just because he is legitimate and I am not. Anna kissed Jesus on his forehead and said to him, a mother's love should always be equal. Do not blame yourself that you remind her of the traumatic incident concerning your conception. It was a technical violation of an Essene rule of marriage that was involved, but it caused her much shame. Simeon explains, Joseph and Mary were betrothed in June 8 BC, 
and betrothal means that they have been chosen to beget children. But while in this state, sexual relations are disallowed, the state of marriage is allowed to be consummated between November and January, when there are no holy days. This adjustment to the Essene celibacy rule was to allow for the continuation of the priestly and kingly lines. After conception, they abstain from sexual relations and must wait six years after the birth of a son before they can be married again. For a daughter, it is three years, because girls are worth half a man. Jesus doing the calculation in his head clearly distraught. So that is why James is seven years younger than me. I see now that his birth in September is also significant. Yes, you have surmised the truth, because your birthday, March 7 BC, does show that the rules were broken. The birthday of the priests and kings is meant to be the special month of September. Chapter 5b, July 8 B.C. Mary's Sorrow Anna taking a deep breath to control her anger. Mary was the most faithful to God of any woman that I have known. I am sorry to tell you, Jesus, that Joseph forced himself on her. He had no remorse, only the thought that he should have her put away to hide his sin, being, as he was called, a just man. Simeon replied, Anna, as a prophetess and widow of eighty-four years, you know that the term just is used for the David crowned prince, whether they are just or not. Further, his sin is exposed in the expression that the Holy Spirit came upon her, because his title, the Holy Spirit, at third position, like mine, in second position of Gabriel. I had to work hard to prevent their expulsion from the Essene order. Jesus explained, Was Mary just coddling me, saying I was going to be great? She said, You told her that I would be called the Son of the Highest and be given the throne of David, but I was just a bastard son. Simeon in a calming voice. The expression son of the highest, as you know, means the position second to the high priest, who is God. This is my position as man, being the expression of God in human form. He will be yours one day. The third position is already yours as a descendant of David, being the son of man, as the representative of the people that you are not responsible for the sins of your father is reflected in your name Jesus, the Joshua of Moses. Your brother bears his name. The Sadducee Ananus has agreed, knowing where his power rests. Chapter 6 Jesus to become an acolyte under Eleazar Ananus Jesus stood there dazed, he could not shake the revelation of the sin of his so-called righteous father and vowed right then and there to be chaste until his marriage. He had always rejected the Essene teaching that claimed that women were the seducers and now he had a greater respect for all women and even prostitutes who must live under the tyranny of men. He was now appreciating his mother's strength, especially in this day of his bar mitzvah, when she would give him up like a baby from her womb. His eyes watered, but he held back, knowing that he must be brave today and forever. Anna, sensing his pain, Jesus, the difficult path, makes you stronger. John, the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, was born six months before you, according to the rules. As the son of a priest, his life will be easy. He will be the teacher of righteousness and will baptize many, but it will not be given to him on a silver platter. She was a seer. He will not have to seek it in the wilderness. Remember when John's mother Elizabeth and her mother were in the wilderness from, from June to September to hide their pregnancy and commune with God. Elizabeth said to your mother to comfort her, Blessed are you among women, 
Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Simeon says, Shall I recommend you to Eleazar and Annas, the eldest son of the high priest, so that you can become an acolyte? It would be important that you reject your father's zealot ways. Yes, I would like that. Simeon says, May you find redemption in Jerusalem. Hannah adds, And a worthy wife. Chapter 7, March 6, Jesus' Bar Mitzvah On the platform constructed next to the Queen's house, Jesus was standing next to his mother Mary. She looked like the true David Queen, wearing a band containing twelve jewels for the twelve tribes of Israel. She was the thirtieth member of the Council of Thirty that represented the moon, and having the blessing of the presiding council, she was the sun. As Jesus looked up at her face, he could see that she was troubled as she looked over to Jerosa Bothus, being like a dragon, having been the head of the seven spiritual leaders based on the seven days of the week and in charge of the ten provinces of the diaspora and still determined to exclude the uncircumcised who were as numerous as the stars. She looked over to Sadducee and Annas, the new high priest, for assurance, and then to Joseph, who was staring into the distance. With both hands she nudged Jesus forward to the audience. Then she left, having just enough time to return to Merd by nightfall. Jesus begins, I have chosen to explain the parable of the sower and the weeds. The kingdom of heaven was likened to a man sowing good seed in his field. Chapter 8, March 7 B.C. Therapeutes of Shepherds The high priest Ananus, acting as an Essene angel, says, Thetis, I know that you are influential with therapeutes from Egypt who live in the wilderness of Merd, herding sheep, calling this place Egypt the place where Joseph and Mary found refuge from King Herod. As Nicodemus, I hope that you will respect the peace that I have negotiated. Thetis answers, As the Joshua of this tribe, I am prepared to use my skills in warfare until that foretold day when we can cross over the Jordan River into the Promised Land. But for now, I will embrace peace putting his arm around Jesus. As Joseph's brother in arms, I welcome you, my godson. Mother Mary, as our Miriam, participates in our religious reenactments, opening the floodgates of the Wadi, crossing Jordan. Congratulations, Jesus, a Joshua on becoming a man. I pledge my fealty to you, as our anointed prince. Jesus says, I am honored by your faith in me, and I look forward to attending your services to reenact the allegories of the Exodus that are such an important connection with the Creator. Thetis says, Come on a festival day, when we can devote ourselves wholly to meditation and virtue from morning through the whole night with choruses of men and women singing psalms and hymns to God that are composed in every kind of meter and melody imaginable, almost surely putting the participant in a mystic state without alcohol. Jesus explained, these traditions are truly the model for churches in the future, but I'm going to enter the monastic life for now. Chapter 9, March 17 A.D. At age 23, Jesus is accepted into Qumran. It is Passover. Joseph and Mary find Jesus in the temple in the Essene quarter of Jerusalem. Joseph is frustrated, saying, Jesus, you are now 23 years old. You have been hiding in this religious cocoon too long. As my firstborn, 
it is time for you to take over the political details of our struggle against Rome. Jesus answers, My studies with Eleazar ended three years ago, and I began the preliminary steps to enter the monastery, remaining outside for one year with a small hatchet and a loincloth and white surplus that they gave to me. After two more years' probation, I was allowed to share the pure kind of holy water, but not yet received into the meetings of the community. Today I hope to be judged eligible to be enrolled as an Essene. Joseph says, Are you serious? Is this the way of a king, spending three years burying your excrement with your own silver hatchet? I expect you to come back with me to Ein Feshka. Dangerous events are brewing. Jesus replies, It would be disrespectful to the council to not appear at my acceptance hearing. Joseph stands up. Mary and I will head back home, and I wait at Emmaus for you to join us. Jesus did not arrive, and they walk back only to find Jesus dressed in the white robe of the Essenes. Joseph glares at him, then turns and marches off. Mary hesitates, then smiles, saying, Be at peace, my son. Chapter 10 23 AD. Joseph is killed by Pilate, leaving Mary a widow. It was not long since Jesus saw Mary again when he attended his father's funeral, having died at age 66. Uncle Thetis goes up to Jesus. I am so sorry about your father. I was there too. But it was chaos with Pilate having hidden soldiers in regular clothes. It was right for us to protest his use of church funds to build the aqueduct. Spiritual thirst is greater than water. Jesus walking over to console his mother. He died doing what he believed in. At last you will get some needed calm and respect as a widow. But she replies, I am not a widow. Being only forty-eight, Having been espoused to Joseph at the age of 18, I need two more years for widowhood. Who will care for me? Jesus turns to Father Jonathan. Why should widowhood be based on law alone? May I tell you about a parable of the widow's might? Jonathan, smiling, speaks truly. I grant Mother Mary the two years. At the funeral were Jesus' brother, James, age 22, Josie's age 15, Jude, aged 5, and Simon, 1 year old. Chapter 11 September 26 AD John the Baptist becomes Pope at age 33. Herod Antipas, having called John the Baptist to appear before him at Tiberias on the Sea of Galilee, says, I hear that you have established a council of thirty for the moon cycle. That was an ingenious move to have a female worth half a man to represent the lunar month, which I am told is twenty-nine and a half days. I am concerned that this is trying to usurp my authority as the head of the church, bequeathed to me by my father, Herod the Great. John the Baptist answers, Please understand my purpose to open the church to the common people, that by being baptized and taking Nazareth vows, as in the days of Samson, that they will have a choice at salvation. My church is in the wilderness of Myrd. Herod Antipas says, You mean there are others like you who wish to dress in camel's hair, with a leather girdle around their loins, neither eating nor drinking, surviving on locusts and wild honey in the wilderness? John the Baptist answers, I introduced baptism and wilderness retreats as an alternative to the Essenes to allow people to continue to live regular lives. This is not a threat to the Herodian church, as no tithes will be lost. All right, then, says Herod Antipas, you can be Pope to the riffraff, but you must stop declaring my marriage to Herodias as immoral. 
It may be true that her first husband is still alive, but this brother-in-law of mine, Thomas, the disinherited son of Herod, is the type that prefers male companionship, so he does not care. He is merely the father of my stepdaughter, Salome. Chapter 12 March 27 A.D. The Rise of the Beast 666 There is no more controversial person in the New Testament than Simon Magus. The writers of the Gospels try to hide his influence in the Gospels with names like Zebedee, Cyrene, Lazarus, and Lepra. But they could not disguise the fact that he was actually one of the twelve disciples named as Simon the Canaanite in Matthew and Mark, and Simon the Zealot in Luke. Who was this disciple? All they can say from his description in the disciple list is that he was zealous for the faith. Throughout history he has been treated as the personification of evil, yet he was Jesus' superior, his friend, and as Magdalene's adoptive father, his father-in-law. His intellectual prowess allowed him to surpass Jonathan Annas and be declared Pope in John the Baptist's place. He is finally revealed in Acts 8-9 as Simon the Magician. He gets in trouble with Peter under the name of Ananias and is killed by Peter over money, yet shows up alive as the Cardinal whom Jesus sends Paul to after his blinding. And in Revelation, he is described as an enemy being called the Beast 666 over doctrinal differences. In the Clementines, when he is up against Peter, in a series of debates, Peter was no match for him, although the author, Pope Clement I, pretends that he was. He was also an accomplished magician, a master of smoke and mirrors, which caused him to attract huge crowds. His most amazing feat was to appear to fly through the air. It was a malfunction of this apparatus that caused him to meet his death in Rome in the time of Nero, as Peter prayed to God. The next video will be on Section 2, March 29 A.D., Jesus' 35th birthday to September 30 A.D.